Hi YouTubers and welcome to my first video on this channel. Um, today I'm going to be looking at the Bayer Fang UV200 dual band FM transceiver and what we're going to do is we're going to take it apart and have a look inside. As you can see there you've got two meters and you've also got 70 SEMs. It's a good little radio, available for about 30 quid online. Um, this one came from Hong Kong not very long ago and uh, just going to take it apart. I'm just going to go through this step by step and hopefully then you'll have a better understanding of what's inside the radio. Right, well here's the radio, and the first thing I'm gonna do is power off the radio to make sure that it's off, and then just open up the back here, see a small tab, and then remove the battery as well. First thing we're gonna do now is remove the antenna, that simply unscrews, and then turn the radio over and if you've installed it, also remove the belt clip or at least the retaining screw for the belt clip, which is here. It's quite a long screw. Okay, so that's there. That's one side. Now, next thing you need to do, and I'll show you here, on the top, there's a, um, a screw which holds in the, uh, the actual uh, dial for the uh, radio. And it's quite a long screw again, but luckily there aren't any retaining springs in here which are going to fly across the room, so just remove that carefully. And then the knob here will just lift out, so just pull it like that and it comes off. Now once you've removed this knob, you'll notice that there's a, a nut here. You'll see the two notches either side, which you will need to unscrew um, to be able to free this, um, this spindle when you take the rest of the radio apart. So what I'm going to do is the budget way of doing it. I don't have a proper tool, um, but I'm going to use anything which has got two notches on. So you could use two small screwdrivers. You could even use a, a very fine pair of scissors. Just be careful you don't slip because otherwise you'll round off the edges. All right, so I've just loosened that there and I've just used a fine point of this in there and just given it a very, very, very short turn um, and just to, just to unbind it and now using a tip of a small screwdriver, you should be able to, as you can see there, I'm just turning this round now. It's a bit of a fiddle, and I'm sure there's a better way of doing it, but it does undo. So now looking at the radio, top of it there, you've got, that's free. This rubber thing you can also remove if you want to, and make assembly late, um, easier later on. There's no nut visible here. Okay, now, looking at the back, you'll see you've got a screw there and a screw there. Now you'll see it lifts up once you release the pressure on these two screws. And again, turn it over. They're quite long and you need to put those to one side. Remember, these are the ones at the back of the casing. Now looking here, you'll see it's lifted up slightly. If you give it an extra nudge, you can prise this up. Not too much, just enough. You'll see two springs here, and these two springs connect onto the uh, loudspeaker on the front of the case. Now on this side, you've got your um, speaker mic and DC jack connector here. Um, and there's a cover, which you can just lift off. It just sits back on there when it goes back in. You'll see it here as I put it on. It will just drop in there. That comes off as well. Now you've got to be a bit careful because everything's a bit wobbly now. So just gently pull it back. Not too hard, but just it will just lift out like that. So this is what we've got so far. We've now got the inside of the front of the radio. So you can see the loudspeaker, 8 ohms, 1 watt. You've got the back of the key button things here. The rubber for the um, electric condenser microphone. So here's the electric condenser microphone. These are the two terminals for the speaker. LCD module. You've then got the two LEDs situated here, you can, should be able to just about make these out. 
these are the ones that change for transmit and receive they're two surface mount ones and so far you're probably thinking what well, how do you get into the rest of it well there's two screws here there's one there and there's one there but it's slightly more to it than that to open it up because this um, SMA connector is soldered onto the board and in order for you to free the board away from the from the back of the case you will need to unsolder that as well before you try and remove it or you'll cause damage so let me just remove these two screws now and also two here one here and one here okay so that's those two screws released um, and you'll notice the back now opens a certain amount so it's this connection here that we need to heat up, use a solder sucker, remove the solder, and then we should be able to release the rest of the board. Okay, well I've now got everything ready. I've got the solder pump ready to go. I'm just gonna heat up this joint here. It's gonna need another go. Okay, that's good. That looks like it's cleared all the solder. Okay, as you can see here now, and hopefully this is clear enough on the video, but that is desoldered. And now we can proceed to take apart the uh, last piece of the radio. Now, just to show you the difference it makes by removing that solder joint on the uh, SMA connector, I can now literally just open it and close it like this. Um, if I show you here, you can see that everything plays around that particular joint here. Okay, now to take it apart, it really is straightforward at this point. You simply need to lift it up slightly over that SMA connector point and then just encourage the encoder shaft to come out. And now it separates into two halves. These are the two connectors for the battery going onto the board and some foam cushioning here. As you can see, the SMA connector, it's bolted onto the case and there's that single um, gold plated um, centre connector which we just removed from the board. When we turn it over, you can see the rest. That's the rotary encoder. That's the LED. This here is the um, earphone and microphone jack. That's the DC jack. This is all of the PA. Now, essentially, because this is a software defined radio, it's direct conversion. There's very little really to see in there. It's also very little to go wrong. The only modification I'd recommend on this uh, and it has been mentioned by a few people, is that the volume at the lowest city is a bit too loud. Um, and this can be fixed by putting in a low value resistor in series with the speaker. In order to do this, as you can see here on the other side, um, you've got these two springs, but I'm just gonna cut one of the tracks here and insert a small um, quarter watt resistor in there, probably, um, 10 ohms, I'm just gonna try it and see what difference it makes the volume. But 10 ohms, maybe 15 or 20 ohms. I'll probably use a resistance box and cheat slightly. But I just find that if I'm trying to sit somewhere quiet and listen, um, or certainly uh, flick through the channels with, with open squelch, as you may do in a weak signal area, that the, uh, the the volume is a bit too loud if you've got people you know, present, unless you're using an earphone, of course. And what I'll do is I'll just go across this with the, uh, with the camera a bit closer so then you can see the detail on the board. Right, well, here's my cheat for working out the 
resistance for the speaker. What I've done, um, I've powered up the radio while it's um, still open uh, using the DC connector here. Don't transmit when you're in this uh, setup like this because it will cause damage. Okay, so we've got the power going in here and I've soldered two wires onto the uh, back of the speaker here. So you can just about make that out. There's two wires there and they go to two crock clips which I've connected to the um, two uh, springs on the on the board. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to use this resistance box and then we can dial in the, an appropriate resistance to give us a, an audio which we can which we you know feel comfortable as being not too loud not too quiet just just right so let me uh, put this in series and uh, then we can go through the uh, through, through the dials. Right, well that's everything wired in. So let's just um, open up the squelch in the radio. I'm just gonna push what is actually the mode button there. And uh, go to the squelch menu. I'm gonna set it to level zero. Now, in case you're not sure, on the volume setting there, that's the lowest setting, and that's the next one up. It's really loud. So, looking at the resistance box, I'm gonna in add in some numbers. So let's start with, that's three ohms, four ohms, five ohms, six ohms, seven ohms, eight ohms. Let's try 10 ohms, 20 ohms. 30 ohms, 40 ohms. That's probably a bit quiet. I'd probably say somewhere between, and bear in mind the audio I'm hearing is going to be different to what you'll be hearing at home. I'd probably say somewhere between 15 and 30 ohms would be about right. Right, well I've determined from that that I'm going to use a 22 ohm resistor in series with the speaker. And I've got one here it's just a nasty old carbon film resistor, cool to what it's what I've got in the in the uh, shack. So I've had a look under the microscope and uh, to try and work out which track I need to need to cut. And fortunately, there's one that's very easy to get to. Now, if I bring it up in front of the camera here, hopefully you'll be able to see it. This spring terminal here has this track which goes along here before the uh, through hole. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a break in this track, decent break as well, um, using a using a very sharp scalpel, cut away the track, and then install the resistor by um, just soldering two blobs here, and then installing the resistor so it goes somewhere around about there, so it's low profile and won't get in the way or hinder the um, connection of these two springs back to the speaker when we reassemble it. Right, I hope you can make this out okay on the. Uh video um, but what I've done here is I've um, cut through one track um, section there and just abraded one part just to remove the varnish from the board now if you bear with me and I'm trying to hold the uh, camera over the eyepiece which is quite hard um, this is a leg of a resistor a quarter resistor to give you an idea of scale so this is just being cleaned um, to remove any varnish um, and this here is completely um, cut through and I've just made a you know so about I suppose about just under a millimetre wide gap there um, in the track and then what I'm going to do if I uh, just move this around under here is connect the resistor one leg of the resistor to the bottom of this spring terminal which already has solder on it as you can probably make out there and then on the other side apply then the other leg here and that should then be quite a neat solution. So let's see how it looks. Right, well I've completed the soldering now and as you can see there's the 22 ohm uh, carbon film resistor. Um, one terminal connected to one of the spring terminals and the other one to the um, part of the board which I exposed. Right, well to put this back together, just threw everything in the reverse order, making sure that you soldered the SMA connector back to the PCB. I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.